Okay, good evening. Welcome to the School of Architecture Evening Lecture Series. Uh, tonight's lecture by Jose Ubery is also co-sponsored by the Graham Foundation. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, be able to thank the Graham, and uh, I think at some point Sarah Bird will be here, so we'll thank her for um, I want to begin also by announcing a date change uh, to the program this week. Sanford Quinter will be here not Wednesday the 24th, but Friday the 26th. So this Friday, also co-sponsored by the Graham Foundation. Um, you don't believe he's coming, do you? <laughs> no. right. Jose will not be here for that lecture. <laughs> um, <laughs> You get the full co-sponsorship of the Grand Foundation. Uh, also, Scott Cohen will be here two weeks from today on Monday, October 6th. It gives me great pleasure this evening to be able to welcome Jose Edward to Chicago and UIC, our good friend from OSU, where Jose has been a professor for the past 17 years. Before joining the faculty at OSU, Jose served as Dean of the College of Architecture at the University of Kentucky and taught before that at schools including Columbia University, Cooper Union, the Polytechno in Milan, and the École Nationale de Beaux-Arts in Paris. Jose was a project architect and collaborator in the Atelier Le Corbusier from 1957 until 1965 when the office closed after Corbusier's death. The seven-year period saw an incredible range of significant and still paradigm-shifting projects, including the Phillips Pavilion in Brussels, much of the work in Chandigarh, the Brazilian Pavilion in Paris, uh, the Monastery at La Tourette, the Venice Hospital project, the uh, Strasbourg uh, Palais Cambrai in Strasbourg, um, uh, the Carpenter Center in Cambridge, uh, and maybe most significantly for this evening, the Chapel of Fairmont. In terms of this chapel, one could say that although Jose only worked in the office uh, of Corbusier for seven years, he's actually collaborated with Corbusier for 50 years, as Jose directed, redesigned, and oversaw the completion of Fairmont, which opened just two years ago. In addition to the extended Fairmont project, Jose has completed many other significant projects across this period, including the French Cultural Center, Center in Damascus, uh, and in 1991, the Miller House in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky. As a deviation of Corbusier's Chauvin residence, and as an exploration of what Jose calls the house as city, the Miller House has been described by critics as diverse as Ken Frampton and Jeffrey Kipnis, as the most architecturally significant residence in the United States. Beyond his architectural projects, Jose has written significant articles on architecture and geometry, and designed installations for major ex exhibitions, including the Moon River Show at the Wexner Center, and this famous skateboard tornado. In his teaching, and uh, as in his own work, Jose deals with issues of the discipline that are close to our own concerns, uh, in terms of how one adjusts to and deviates from prior architectural models, and how repetition of precedents can induce the possibility of newness. Since Peter Eisenman lectured here last week, uh, I think we've all been thinking about the, you know, some of the parallel timelines uh, of Jose and Peter. In 1963, when Peter finished his PhD dissertation, the design process of Fermanet was beginning. In 1971, Peter's first essays from his study were being published as the foundations of Fermanet were finally appearing. And in, 19, in 2006, finally, Peter's dissertation was published and Fermanet was completed. Um, sometimes architectural projects take over 40 years to realize, uh, which is not necessarily a depressing thought, as these endeavors end up informing all of the other work that happens in between, uh, and it attests to the peculiar persistence of vision that architecture requires. Most heartening is the great half-life that these efforts have on subsequent generations, on us and others like us, us who will be lecturing here, Scott Cohen, uh, would be a direct influence of both, I think, that we'll hear most recently as a legacy. The work continues to inform and be capable of sponsoring multiple new attitudes. No doubt for his kind, uh, for Scott and his kind, Fermanet will be a great accomplishment in complex geometric form, while for others of us, the floating figure on mass in the chapel is an emblem of a new approach to monolithic, singular, yet buoyant shapes. 
Jose is an architect of great talent, few words, strong opinions, and high standards. If Jose says something is pretty good, uh, it means pretty much it's museum worthy to the rest of us. Please join me in welcoming the much more than pretty good, Jose Lurie. You know, I, I, I am an author of soccer, you know, you have the monkeys and the coyotes, but I'm an old dinosaur, I can get you. <laughs> so, uh, it's a different world, I know. Uh, you are completely out of that now, you know, in all super Africa, so. Uh, where is the thing to run the pies? Okay, this is, uh, I show that briefly because it is uh, a very curious uh, thing. Well, in fact, let me say first, um, I'm going to show some of the example of my work. This is one that uh, I, I built only two houses, but I have a big collection of 100 houses and a uh, hundred project. So I don't show all of it. And two or three projects uh, like that, and then uh, after that I will go uh, more uh, uh, in depth uh, with uh, 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 the uh, church and film. Okay. I don't know, maybe it's... This was a curious experience for me because in 1970, uh, it was an experience in Bologna, an exposition about French architecture, and uh, the group of uh, Italian architects wanted to show that uh, the last occasion in the construction of the well, you know, that France was producing a great mass of uh, uh, big uh, housing, uh, in a very elementary, plan, elementary construction. We had a big problem of uh, creating uh, enough how what you needed for uh, uh, the French people and because of the destruction of the war many people. It's called the Achelai. <coughs> and Corbusier had read the Imad Villa and then uh, this Italian architect wanted to reconstruct uh, the uh, pavilion of Esprit Nouveau that he had built in 1925. 25 in, uh, in an exhibition in Paris. And we did that, uh, we start in June, we start construction in August, October 10, it was inaugurated. Uh, it's a complete unit uh, with a double level, I think you all know that, uh, if you still study uh, this type of thing, I don't know, no, we have no time, no. And uh, which was interesting because it was introducing a, a garden. And in fact, I, I think that even today, this model, uh, this typology, if you want, to it himself used several times. I mean, you find this in uh, Villa Garch, you find this in Villa Chaudan. It's always a team which is reused and, and changed and developed according to his, develop, his own development. <laughs> and uh, it introduced a garden, uh, which is a suspended garden, because this is a unit uh, which can be anywhere in the, in the sky. And it would be a good answer to the unbelievable expansion of the American city or the European city with uh, uh, developers and uh, uh, all these house, uh, crap house, which are made in uh, supposedly traditional style that nobody knows from which tradition. So this for me was a great example, a great experience also because I was in the last language of Corbusier and suddenly I had to build something which was 1925. So I had to make a lot of studies uh, to arrive to understand well uh, this thing at the for that, it was a, a very interesting experience. Okay. 
this is uh, in Syria, I want this, uh, this back, uh, the French uh, uh, cultural center that the main facade is very difficult to, to, uh, to photograph. I'll show you some images. That was a former girl that a new door I did uh, recently. But the interior, I mean, it's a very small site. I mean, the site, the building itself could fit in this room. So I have uh, eight or nine floors, and uh, I had uh, uh, this center space has three, uh, three sections, and the center space is 15 meters high. and. Uh, I you have to give some type of space to, to the building. You know, you see, you can see the, uh, the thing. The grid here is not a sun breaker, it's a view breaker because uh, the, the, the building outside are so terrible that it's, uh, uh, you don't have to see it. And that will back the sun. So you, you, this was a construction map by one guy we knew about concrete, one we knew about uh, uh, steel and so on. And the workers were about 14 years old in age. Because there were no workers, they were all in Saudi Arabia building and very expensive. So, so, so that was an interesting experience. This is the house of Kentucky. Uh, that was also made. Uh, the worker were student of the school. And uh, the contractor was a former student of the School of Kentucky. And I was in uh, at the time of the College of Architecture. And so I, uh, I had made an, ex an experience uh, with a, a construction in uh, stud and drywall and wood and all that. And uh, uh, I don't show it because the building has been absolutely changed by his order. So. No, I mean, uh, the thing is, uh, at this time, I had uh, the book of, uh, I didn't know anything, I just arrived from France, I didn't know anything about stuff, about the high wall, about all this uh, shit talk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my God, I took the book of Richard Meyer, of construction of, and it's all perfect. You look at this book, which was made at one time at GA. You see every single detail, all the wood is perfect, all the lines, and it's like you're drawing your stairs on the wall, you know. And so when we start to build, I discovered that all the wood was this way, that the dimensions were not good. But, so this was a reaction of again that. I said, okay, I go back to the concrete, and I build in concrete, and so on. And this is what happened. And that the house, the center space of the house. The furniture were a little bit bizarre. You know, you don't control your clients all you know, the time. And uh, I give you some ideas like that. You see, it's a. Uh, and, and now, the particular idea of this house, you see, I can draw on the side. The thing I like is that. Usually a house is, uh, you have uh, the garage, the laundry, uh, and uh, here you have the kitchen, you have a dining room, living room, a stair, and after you have the bedrooms, and all they are here, and so on. So this is a very depressing plan. You should never do that. So my idea was, First it was in the suburb, and I don't like the suburbs where you see all these kind of double uh, roof, triple roof, and then they grow in all directions and so on. And so what I did, um, I said first I met an enclosure which is a city. A little bit going back to some ideas of uh, which were in the 70s. Uh, Pete Brown and company, where we had this, uh, also things like uh, uh, Venice Hospital and so on. And uh, I said there are three houses, uh, three the parents, 
uh, and his, 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 his daughter and his son. And, and they are inside this, this system. And um, this is the diagram of the house. So what you see here is uh, the vertical public space. And each house is made in a way that you have um, each house has two floors, you know, with uh, its own stairs outside and so on. And um, a general stair, an elevator, blah blah blah. This is public. And here it's a bedroom, a bathroom, and here are spaces to work. I mean, there, there were really autonomous units inside uh, the village, uh, uh, which was uh, with these walls around. So the concrete are the walls, <laughs> and uh, uh, what was nice is that this was also connected at this level, so it, it was very interesting to to see that the family could live at different levels and could uh, use this building uh, pretty well. So you see here the, the main... Uh, the second thing which was important for me was the dissociation because uh, the sheet rock construction I did before was all connected and was looking like false concrete. I mean, uh, in fact, all this video uh, at the beginning of my uh, company, they wanted to limit it with sheet rock the concrete. They wanted to make buildings which were just like concrete but they were not. And, this was the problem. This was real concrete. And uh, so I wanted to dissociate any element of the thing. So you can see, for example, the main facade is that. It's a wall, and uh, the unit doesn't touch the facade, which was a big problem for my client, because he said, why the apartment don't touch the facade? I said, it's not the facade. It's this a metaphor of the facade. He said, I am a lawyer. And I never paid a metaphor so, so expensive. I said, ah, you know, <laughs> you want to be. So, <laughs> you see, it's, it's very difficult, but they were good clients. So, everything is separated. This is the unit. Uh, it is the. Uh, in fact, this house was conceived also on the model of the mansion. Uh, you know, in Louisiana, you have this. Uh, big houses with porticos and so on. So this was uh, the Corbusian facade, if you want, uh, but it's also a portico which is usable at different level. So you can, here you have a terrace and so on. So here you have the parents and they can, each morning he was getting out at six o'clock and run all around the side and uh, he come back and take his shower. That's the jacuzzi. And here was uh, uh, the library, and here the media room. So this was called Body and Soul. That was each thing of the name. So it was funny. But so this is the site yeah. of this house. <coughs> now this is a, it was one of the last projects uh, where I started. You know, I have always uh, been interested. Uh, in uh, being in tune with uh, uh, what is going on, not to be a la mode, but to be, to, uh, I don't do many projects, so I'm, I'm not making money with architecture, I'm not, it's not my problem, I don't want to, to uh, maybe it's why I teach, but it's this way. So here yeah, I was interested, you know, I've been seeing a lot of things of Frank Gehry, which is fantastic, uh, Anyway, but uh, uh, recently I saw the, in Chicago, he has his camera. I've seen a thing very bizarre, which is uh, supposed to be where Tom Main got his. Uh, <laughs> no, it's a way the camera. <laughs> so this, but the space in front is beautiful, and it's made with nothing, with just bars and so on. So I was wanted to see if I could give such. So this is in part uh, the section in this house is, is very simple. 
it was it was a big problem for me also because my time. But I had made this house with this principal in uh, in uh, <coughs> Kentucky, and this one was in near Cleveland. And uh, you see, in a long site, and you have uh, uh, the entrance here. We had so. This one was made more like a village. So you see, you had a street all the way along, crossing the house, and on one side you had all the bedrooms and the media room and so on. So this was the kind of, uh, if you want, sedentary part, and this was the more open uh, part which was here. So this was. <coughs> A way, different way to answer this problem of the. And so you have here uh, this covered uh, sedentary with a different, and here the, uh, the other part which is more up, and then suddenly embraced that. So there were different. We never go very far uh, in this project because the last estimation was 1 million three or four. And the client had only four hundred fifty thousand dollars, but he encouraged me to do the project to develop it. It was the most funny thing, but it can give you an, an idea. You see, so there's a nomadic and this is sedentary, and and I like it is this opposition and giving the light on the side here and so that. So here's some study of the roof. So these were the platforms, the village. You see, uh, that's all the part. And uh, that's another version of the roof because we had some problems with the entrance and so on, and, uh, which I like very much. This project, I don't know why you came back, but okay. Okay, so I, I think I like it also the fact to bring the roof down and make it develop and like a forward scene coming from the ground when the other one was more this way. So that's what I did. This was a project. The, the montage is not very good, but the, the museum in Genova, in, Genova in, uh, in Switzerland, you have uh, the lake here, and uh, it was an interesting site. And it was a museum, a technological museum, and, uh, in three parts. So you have one, two, three pieces which were connected and uh, connected to the site and so on. Uh, this was uh, judged by a, an, an Italian architect. And uh, I will not say his name, but in the jury, 15 of his former students were the 15 first selected to was very interesting. <coughs> and you did not give me any water. Sure. <laughs> <coughs> or give me some uh, white wine. Or uh, red or whatever. Okay, you see, the one interesting thing is that uh, you, were, you had a street going up here, you had a, a platform at this level, and uh, another street here, so you could enter. Now you make only one entrance in the, in the museum. Here we had a, a kind of tube. Oh. You know, a computer uh, is a very nice. <laughs> well, okay. You had this kind of tunnel which was going down to the German entrance, and you could see the, uh, the inside of the museum. You had people coming and going down here and so on. So, it was an interesting thing. Okay. Very complicated complaint. Uh, okay, so that was uh, for me a, a kind of beautiful product because all this part was the public part with the restaurant, the cafe, was the kind of wrapping up of the, uh, the glass, and which was going on the other side for the offices which were looking at the existing building, did not have a closed facade. And this was, this site was completely opaque for the museum. 
And uh, <coughs> I never asked him that was his work. So, uh, this is uh, something we will not see when the entrance of the studio on the Cabinet. I go back to our background. But some of the last photographs of Corbusier. You see, he had a little, uh, he was coming back from, from uh, Brazil, and he had a little dog here. So he wanted the photograph to eventually attack the, the, the company, the airplane company. Okay, so I start the story of the, the church briefly. I do a brief story, I don't know if you know it or not. But that was probably in the 60s. Well, you know whiskey, right? <laughs> Yeah, So this was the priest and the commissaire looking for sites. That's where his coins, uh, you know, of the site itself were selected. Because we would never start a project uh, before to go to the site. I mean, I don't know if you know Georges Simon, who was the famous uh, author of uh, Thriller. He produced a long and of books. But he had a famous person, uh, Inspector McGray. And Inspector McGray was someone who was resolving a uh, crime problem in trying to live in the skin of the victim. So he was going to all the cafe, the restaurant, he was very good. And, uh, and suddenly you had an idea, oh, that, so come here, we the same thing for the, the building. He would, he would go to, to the site, he would appreciate the thing, appreciate the, the obstacle, which you will see later were quite big, and, and try to put the church here where there is nothing to... Uh, this building are not very good in Chevy. And so he tried to make them away, make his, his building away from, from there. And uh, the other particularity of the site, where it was a kind of concrete uh, uh, site. And uh, also I think in the... My community wanted to deal with, uh, you know, you had all this story with Michelangelo, uh, uh, the, the church in Rome, and the, the dome, and uh, everything. And, and he wanted to make a, a, a vertical building which became uh, crystallizing and making a, a space exist. And, and in fact, it's what happened uh, later in France. So he had a, a lot of unbuilt projects. And this was one of his projects of 1929 uh, for a small town near Paris. And uh, it was a, a, a prison like that, very vertical, with a run going around. And so, so you can see the plan here. So you were discovering the interior of the space and suddenly going to a vertical space. You know, Mario Volta has always done all his building like that. He saw the church once, and you always do a low entrance and a vertical thing. He never did anything else with a lot of bricks. Uh, so, uh, it's not very good. Uh, uh, mostly when you go to the museum in San Francisco, where uh, uh, that's one of the worst museums you can see, the, the entrance space is absolutely out of control. Uh, but that's, that's it. So, but in the same time, Corbusier had some evolution. You know, I remember his paintings. Uh, that's another problem of Corbusier with the cubists, because the cubists were uh, the cubists were 
dislocating form, uh, fragmenting, trying to see things from different, different uh, uh, angles of view, and so on and so. Uh, they could not do that because he had his love for objects, and uh, as an architect, he had to design uh, objects. So, so he was doing uh, this kind of transformation, and it's like if the object is totally developed on the, on, on the plane, and, and there are passage, passages between uh, the different things, and which create a continuity. So, uh, at the time of Fermini, uh, we were at this at this level of his uh, uh, development, uh, formal development. So this would have an influence. He had also met the, uh, the assembly in Chandigarh, which was based on the uh, uh, hyperboloid revolution and so on. So there was some transformation in, in his uh, aesthetics, if you want, and his language, which were significant uh, compared to what he did in, uh, in Le Tremblay for the project I show you. And that is an aspect. Uh, so I got this, this drawings here. You know, I got the sketches. I got now uh, some the start of drawing, which was defining, for example, the light in the building, the light, the, the seats, and so on. And uh, uh, that was a type of way of exchange of concept uh, that we had. We had also the, the story of uh, uh, the cupola in uh, Hagia Sophia in, uh, in Istanbul, where Kobuzi had always been uh, uh, in the 1910. He had seen this enormous cupola with the big buttresses and so on, which were very light inside uh, because of this perforation. I mean, it's a some, you know, it's a kind of complex assemblage of different experience and uh, uh, from his travel, or from his studies, or from his other project, or from, which suddenly uh, get in order uh, in a new project. And, and this, I think, he does that all the, all the time. I mean, uh, uh, when he starts uh, to write, uh, he takes the bedroom of uh, Marseille and he starts the bedroom of Marseille for the guitar. He gives uh, uh, the little bedroom for the kid to the little monks, and the big monks get the big room and, and, and so on. And so, so I mean, it's, it's a way of working, and uh, he starts there in the sky, and after that, everything goes down. But in all this project, you, you find this. Because if you elaborate your own language, I think it's similar for many architects. Uh, if you take Gary, it's the same. I mean, he works on, on his own uh, production and he does interrogate, he make an interrogation, in fact, of himself. I mean, uh, and Covizid does was doing that too. Uh, one of the last important things was Stonehenge, with the story of the, uh, uh, the sun turning around the uh, building. And these are the two drawings that he gave me too, to the, uh, the concept for the church, where the piece here was going to disappear, which was too expensive. But the church itself was a kind of cold, uh, very undefined, and uh, the light all around, the wind going up, uh, and this was the a big thing in the middle for the little singer. And this was the plan. You see, you have a ramp going up. So it's a plan which comes from the other building, and uh, uh, which is, in fact, is going to be uh, the, the most important thing. You know, we're entering on the side, the fifth family will be enter the axis of the square, and so on. So there are formal modifications which are going to slow the up. This was a study of uh, what happened in the program. You know, the program is very simple. In, uh, and these were all other studies of. Uh, I show you that because it gives you an idea of uh, you know, this kind of. Uh, these were always discussion on the table or day by day how we were going to do this thing or that thing. And, and uh, you see, for example, uh, there's a first ID for the 
the bank tower which disappear and transform uh, structurally with this platform. So, so that is a, a, a kind of, uh, you know, discovery of a, uh, that was another possible solution which uh, disappeared too. And finally, uh, what is more or less now. And, and so this is uh, uh, connected also with, you see here is a, uh, the roof of uh, 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 Chandigarh, uh, the, the assembly building. Uh, the Dedakis have met this uh, study on the sun to, to send the sun in the, in the middle. So uh, that was, I thought, I was making a lot of money. I mean, one of the particularities of, of our work that we were not doing drawings. So today, with the computer, we make always drawings. We don't know why, but we make a lot of drawings. And uh, uh, we were not making drawings. We were making models. We were working about ideas. And from this is a dissociation between uh, the support for the, the shell and support for the floor. You see studies on geometry. And the first project happened. And, uh, was slowly uh, 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 changed, you know, and, and so this was the first formalization of the project. You had uh, the church at the bottom top, and you see it's still uh, taken in the, uh, in the prints of the former uh, geometry, Cobbesian geometry. I mean, this would disappear totally, and um, it wasn't a nice model, but. You see here, it starts to change the terrain. I mean, these are only I did at one moment to try to change the, the, the aesthetics of the project and, and model. And, and you have uh, this cutting tool, so you have a stair with a platform here which is suspended. I become more and more, uh, I use more modern of my structure. And one day, there's, a big discussion. So this was the protagonist, uh, is it, uh, the mayor of family, uh, two uh, the, the priests here, and uh, the Dominican was our help for uh, the liturgy. And this, you may recognize me on the corner here. Uh, it was very good. And uh, with this stuff, well, uh, so I show that in continuity, but it's not a continuity, it's the fact. We, we used to do what we said, what we would call, uh, put a uh, uh, project in refrigerators, which was an idea. You know, there is something curious that when we ask you to do a project in a studio, uh, we never elaborate anymore on this project. I mean, uh, you, you cannot believe that it is important. Uh, to make a re-reading of your project and suddenly you develop it and you create your own continuity of this project, it can become something. And I think this is uh, one of the big problems of the School of Architecture, in my opinion, is that uh, so you have to look at your de own development through all your different projects and try to understand when did you reach some kind of very important decision, very important solution, very important thing which appear and maybe will be reused, you know, we, uh, this is what, what was happening here. So I think this, you see, is a very important moment in the, in, in the project because we have constantly to reduce the project because of money. And uh, at one moment, uh, we had uh, something which was the square for the, the church itself, and we had a, a balcony which was, and the altar was here, and we had a balcony which was, uh, you know, to put the additional uh, number of people in the square was 25 meters by 25 meters, which is very small. So here we had, uh, and this was creating in the same moment, the chapel and the needs for the week. So, suddenly this model, you know, I was working, we were discussing, and this become connected 
to these floors. I mean, it's, it's where the spiral appear. And at this point, that's another important thing I see, is that this world was made. I mean, you can see it today. Uh, it's not this way, you know, maybe this bit uh, concrete or so, but uh, when do you reach a solution, a local solution in a, in a project, and not constantly we put everything again on the uh, starting everything. And, and you see that, that's uh, where you see that you have the entrance, and here the, the balcony, and so. On Sunday, everybody could see the altar here, and uh, uh, during the week, they could see a second altar here. Uh, I discovered that it was necessary because uh, uh, I, am, I am not a very much of a Catholic, but uh, when I was doing this project, I was obliged to go to the mass at 6 o'clock in the morning, and at, night, at noon on Sunday at 6 o'clock for on the evening uh, to try to understand how it works. I mean, like it's a series of acts which develop uh, inside the building and how do, do you uh, make them happen in your building? So it's why these altars here appear because I saw in Notre Dame against a big column, you had a small altar and during the week everybody was there because the church is so big that, and also there's less and less Catholic in front of them. Problem. But uh, it's not my problem. Okay, so these two drawings are uh, right away the capitalization of this discovery, and there are still things which will not happen, but I'm not going to make all this. And finally, that uh, the final solution for as it was made in a more precise model, if you want. This was still unresolved. But the question was there. That's the time also. What I liked when I did the house in uh, Kentucky is that I designed, I never had, uh, uh, in fact, the real plan of the house have been made by students uh, last year. Uh, section, plan, everything for sale. They are fantastic. I never saw it before. It's why I never published it because I never. People were asking me drawings, and I had 10 holes that big of drawings, but nothing which was very well done. Because what was well done was a building. You know, you have to choose whether you make nice drawing or you make nice building. So sometimes you can do both, I don't know. Anyway, there's a section, so we made a series of plans. And those plans are very funny because, because you said the project is finished. He called the priest, everybody, and said, look, we can start construction tomorrow. <laughs> so the, the priest said, what? What is, uh, what is going on here? What do you... Oh, this is no problem. We will sell it away. He says, no problem. And, and, and here, there, there is no entrance. Yeah, we don't know how to do it. Right now. We, we don't do it. I mean, <laughs> we will do it. And yeah, <laughs> You know, it's like uh, when they were doing the visual art center, you know, the, the big stair has uh, glass blocks. And Sert, who was in Joseph with Sert, unfortunately, that too, was very, uh, uh, you know, in trouble because he was saying, how do you say, I don't know what to do, there is no thing here. So finally, in despair, he sent him uh, five glass blocks and he said, choose one and we put it in the stair. And it already was done. I mean, because we never knew what to do. You know, that's about the thing. It's a different way of uh, approach, maybe phenomenological approach to architecture, but uh, is it way. And, and this is a 65 Corbusier in front of a uh, uh, Maison La Culture de Fiamini. He died very one month later. And here was the site, if you want, on one, one side you had uh, the Maison de la Culture here, and here you had the stadium. After uh, Vajonski built uh, a swimming pool here, and I had started to build uh, the church. See, that's uh, 
maison de la culture, la unité which was built also. And uh, okay, so these are a series of drawings that summarize a little bit, which I published uh, instead of a text in the Peter Eisenman catalog of 1982, but they show uh, the different. This one is funny because, uh, you know, Corbusier was always concerned by what to do, how to finish this thing, and uh, this was the mountain in La Chaux-de-Fond, the profile of the mountain from his bedroom, which had a kind of thing like that. And his other interest was uh, not the German, but the element of the German. He says this fantastic those element of the 1914, 1918 year, get the war, that is fantastic thing, they were finished by a pond. So that the translation that happened to uh, so Kuskele would always be late seems to uh, like uh, the, for him the sun was the sun coming out from behind the mountain on the other side of the black lake of Geneva and so on. So we were very uh, close to some kind of reality. Like if you were designing your ramp and the ramp was too steep, he would send you to Montmartre with a lover and, and define the, the slope of all the, the ramps of Montmartre. Uh, strength. Anyway, so this important thing also, you see the Maison Gérard, the Maison Gérard are very simple, they are made with two pieces of uh, uh, subway tunnel, as Kobe just said himself. And uh, how do you produce diversity uh, to present? It's very interesting because when you when you go to uh, you know there are two hours the parents of the, the, the son, and you see the hours this way after the hours this way after the hours that way after. And one day, what was the idea was the section is like that and like that, so we present the two uh, view of the house. So one house becomes here, the other house becomes this way. Not because of the right angle, but because of finding the... And, and here it's the same, you know, the, you know, these two faces are the same angle, but the cut here to bring the water uh, down uh, makes them totally different. And, uh, one face is vertical, so it changed totally the geometry of uh, see the water, <coughs> the light. This was the final solution uh, for the light because uh, we, had, we had a problem with the bench. And finally this was trying to represent the effect that in fact we wanted to produce. So, and which for me was a thing to, to reach and it has been a very difficult task to, to do. And so we go, we draw the scene, the models, and we have to do different modifications. I don't know, I'm not going to... Uh, after we can come back if you want, but I think what is important is uh, that one day we start the construction in two times, in uh, 72 and uh, 79. And you see the model of construction on the site, very elementary, but very well done. We were doing the steel, uh, casting, everything and, uh, on the site. And suddenly the bankruptcy of the contractor uh, stopped the building, the building stopped here. And, uh, but you had look, the, the anchors were pretty well done. And so I had never seen the inside, uh, except we had been able, so uh, I did this model for that, but what we had was this, so it was, you have to have some imagination when you build, because it's very difficult to connect the two images, set of the construction and the one of the uh, and so. so 19, for 35 years, this remain for 30 years abandoned. And uh, what was missing was that. 
And so we were just kind of caught then uh, in 2003. How do we do, you know, we continue? I mean, uh, as, so when the SK proposed a solution, uh, Simon Lafarge, the contractor, proposed another solution, which was the use of uh, this very, uh, uh, I don't know how you call it in English, in a, it's a very light uh, concrete, uh, plastic concrete that you inject, self-leveling uh, things like that, that you inject from the top. And uh, it, it's a very important thing because uh, in a building like that you have so much metal, so much hard, so much thing in the walls that you cannot vibrate. Uh, if not, you, you start to move too much in the steel. So you have to work. So, this was like to make a big chocolate cake, you know. We had the casting level by level, and we are pouring the thing. Uh, and, and this was become a very interesting thing. So, you see, we restart. That was how it was inside, when we light destroyed. And also vandalized. You see, that an example uh, of the... Uh, uh, you have all the different layers of metal. You have uh, replaced something. You will see we did some stuff. Uh, we made a constellation on, on the side. Uh, and slowly it goes up. You see that? Uh, the concrete come. Uh, and you have a guy with an electric thing which control, make sure that the level of the concrete is always the same. Or there are sometimes two, two people in the pan. And you have to do that in the morning. In one morning, each wing is done. So, you know, this construction is different. Uh, uh, but it was a very interesting... Uh, uh, this, I did not do anything about that, but uh, that I look good. Uh, now, I just wanted to show you that because that's a new, you see the difference between the old casting and the new one that we use the, the CNC machine, and everything is precise. And in a certain way, we gave the drawing to do that. I mean, uh, in the past, we, dis we described uh, geometrically very precisely uh, uh, the thing, and uh, they could do it. Uh, the contractor on the site orders that somewhere. Uh, there is a lot of things which are made. part on, on the side and uh, or prefabricated. This is a, it's not a precise one, it's a, it's just a study. And these are our uh, drawings. All what is read is what at one moment has to be done. That's a great thing of the computer that you follow the, the construction and you define what you have to do constantly. These are, for example, uh, the canon for light, which is position, uh, dimension, blah, blah, blah. This is a, you can work in it, it's a big thing. These are also another effect of the work, because I could go to, uh, I was teaching at the same time, so I could go to uh, uh, France every month, I was going three days or four days and coming back. Uh, so we had, uh, all the things were by exchange, by fax or scan or whatever, and I was uh, giving my, my uh, correction and decision constantly. So I have been able to constantly control everything which happened. Uh, so if you don't like it, you can say it's my fault. Uh, this was uh, something I liked very much, which was to bring uh, the air conditioning and heating by a big uh, thing which I call the gross Berta because it was like a big cannon. And in 1914, when the Germans were attacking Paris, they made an enormous cannon called uh, gross Berta, gross Berta, and the uh, uh, and uh, uh, they tried to bomb Paris. I don't know if any others ever arrived in Paris because they were so heavy that. Well, a little bit like the thing of Charlie Chaplin, anyway, these are also discussions, you know. 
the finish of the pens uh, collage for the study of the, the site, uh, detail of the fun thing, and this, this in the same time goes on. I mean, it's, and, and the other aspect of that, with uh, the correction, the different way of building, is uh, many things are prevalent. This is a one piece, 35 ton, blue. This is another piece, blue. Prefer again, this was five pieces, etc. So, so uh, you start to conceive concrete in a totally different way. There's a kind of continuous casting, homogeneous uh, building which uh, in the past were happening. So that's a, a different thing. So this is attached by two or three things. Or I always ask the, the contractor if he had a good interest. <laughs> you see that the size of the, the construction. You see this piece, uh, it's fantastic. You know, they bought it, no, put in it. You know, very, very precise stuff. Right? 35 tons, uh, 25 meter high, and boom, say, so yeah, not another one. Uh, uh, that was an architectural solution to not see the. the to not see the, the water proofing. So we made the, the top in concrete, which was giving more unity. And this was made by prefabricated panels. And so, so you see an example here. Uh, the best thing was that was to go uh, uh, the crane and the kind of uh, panel. Uh, a panel box uh, where you were suspended in the air so you could make I could make always all the two of what was happening and uh, that was very interesting if you don't have vertigo you don't know some movie maker you know, okay. okay so suddenly so this was my great problem because more and more we were Constricting more and more, I was saying, wow, is that going to work? No, it's, I couldn't sleep, I think I was calling you in the night and uh, you were with a, with a different in town. And, is that working or is that, how is the light? Was, because finally, all was about this, this thing of light, the, the line which follows the floors, uh, the cannon, the three cannons, and so on, and the star here. So, uh, this is the city, and uh, so now we have a, a cedar. Well, but, uh, I thought it was beautiful at one moment, I didn't tell you. Now we go back to the I guess it's coming back. So you see, that's, that's a very important thing. And curiously, I have um, had two opinions, I was telling that before to you very opposite people uh, who visit the church. One was born fix and he had the same reaction as the old here. Which, yeah, the old here sent me a letter to congratulate me. Uh, I was very surprised. With a, a book of his drawing published by Prince Charles. I can show you so. I was, but I was great because I mean that people is someone who is sensitive, I mean, at least to what, uh, to the thing. So now I show you different images, uh, you know, this is easy with the design design of this part. There was some very interesting uh, problem to resolve, the problem of the glass, you know, which was leaving the water falling down without problem. All the system of this for the water is connected, which turn around and finish. In a, you know, these are the little facts which make the kind of texture or tectonics of the building. And uh, the, finally, that photograph taken by Ryan, he made a kind of trick to, to but it gave a good impression of the side and the, the luminous effect produced by, by the star here, by the constellation of Orion, which is, you can see it here. 
which brings the light at different time of the day. And that's very fantastic. So this is uh, uh, inauguration, uh, always uh, nice illumination of things. That is good. I did some the French artist in there, it was pretty good. Uh, and so on. And this was uh, the, my team. So I got up the four the three musketeers, uh, because there were four. And here were my mother of size, Patrice Perrin, architect, Aline de Verger, and uh, this is a young architect who did all the computer drawing and spent a lot of time on the site, uh, uh, Mr. Roman Chazam. And this is, it's me, they, they, to become a good architect, they have to, to see the size necessary for, for that. You know. Uh, a little bit. Anyway. Okay. Is that, that okay? This uh, is very interesting because uh, <coughs> so the only thing that this was fragmented and I was trying to bring this experience of making something continuous, which is the contrary of what I did in uh, the villa uh, in uh, Kentucky where I dissociated everything uh, and so on. And gonna, even in the ceiling of the houses, I had the sheet rock here. But here I had a piece and you could see the sheet rock. I would do that, uh, you had a window, but the facade was doing that. You see, you had a, so everything was perceptible, so you would see the facade from inside the house and from outside. And I, I 
this, with this sense of joint and articulation, I developed a lot of projects. I, I would always resolve it. Uh, the other thing in Corbusier was, if you had one thing like that, you would align this to create uh, continuity in space, visual continuity. Uh, I would not do that. I would always do the contrary. And he was making a big problem because each time I, I was thinking what I learned and what I would not do. So, so that was the interesting thing. So here I would do that. I would put it here and change the system. So maybe I would be terrible. I don't know. So that's the thing. And I should say, uh, if I had not made this really, you see, thinking with time, uh, I was totally innocent when I started construction of the church. I had no idea of the complexity, not complexity uh, in terms of making, but our important were certain dimensions and details and so on. And for example, uh, I don't know, the, uh, you have this piece which is outside. Okay, this piece uh, touch this, that. Okay, here you have the lighting. Here you have a glass, the water to protect it here. Here you have a piece, you know, what dimension you give to this piece? At the beginning of the project, we had this here. And one day I said, no, we're going to make it bigger. Because if not, we don't see this one. But it's all an opposition. Nobody can Well, I was so anxious after that. Because then, is that working? I, mean, it, it, and, uh, I think it's a uh, uh, way I think it's very interesting to make something. Because it's all like if you make a thing with your hands. Like if you, you are. Uh, you know, making a sculpture, I mean, so you can appreciate things, you can, whatever it is, a sculpture, I mean, it's, it's, uh, in architecture, it's different, because it, it's like I tell you, for example, that in the, in the building of, uh, of the French embassy, uh, I had the, I had the, the big room, which is, you have the library, uh, it's very like a section. You have the library here, you have a, uh, a room for an uh, auditorium, and you are here, the gallery is free. Uh, initially, I made this, and here you have the other part of the building. So it was one, two, three, boy, boy, boy. Here, initially, I made the thing this way following the, the steps. And one day I come back to the to uh, to Syria and uh, I look at them and I say that doesn't work. The, the space of here does not dilute itself. You know it's sensation that you have. So I had one of the rare things I did in my life was to make a fake beam. I made the beam here, you know, no, to control the verticality. But this is pure first. And you are uh, finally said such a point of vision you want to do this. If you go to San Diego in uh, in Rome and you are in one of the corner and you have you don't know if it's a triangle or a square or a cube. Okay. And it's dynamic, it's both this way and both particular because it's the, the shape changes consistently. It's a fantasy. There is nothing in this building, just painted in a bad white color. And uh, it's an extraordinary building. I mean, it's a. Uh, uh, or you have a solid uh, architecture for me. It, it's a question of experience and, uh, and uh, uh, in all sense of, of the term. You know, in, the, in the houses here, you do it with your own life too. Each of these are the two kids, they have to stay to get out. 
Then I tried to get out of the scale of the other side. And there was a man I tried to see. Because when I was a kid, in this type of fun, each time there were people in the house, I had to say hello, hello. So I hated that. And I would run very quickly. So here yeah, I said, they kind of their own life. But in a certain way, they learned to form up. So I think that if I had not gone to the house and the experience I've made, I don't know if I could have done it. Well, I would have much more. It's, uh, you know, it's been a four year, three, four year is a plan of this. I'm very difficult because people are all suggesting that you, you bear the, the result of the bearing. Plus all the foundation of the project here was the density. Uh, an architect bought. Uh, you know, all the, the churches have been, have been published in 30 different magazines of architecture in uh, Australia and England. Good or bad, there are some critics of what they have. In France, the two main publications of architecture in Germany and uh, the other one about construction. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's just a new journal made by a group, group of young architects who did a very good article, an article for the visitor. It's, uh, it's, it's a very
the monster of the Dominion and the explode. They say we are first of reality. They went all around trying to get city and they did it. They were running all the So now it's divided. The conference center. Okay. This is a, on the top of the hill, is a, the pilgrimage chapel. So the real church is not that. This is a chapel. The church is here once each year for the pilgrimage of the here. So the altar is here. I mean, that's a, a kind of a beautiful uh, outside church. And uh, there is a detail, very funny here, that I don't know if you remember in the wall, uh, it, it's this big wall we have here the roof here. And here you have a box. You have one altar outside here, which is underneath that, and the other altar is here. So here there is a statue of the Virgin Mary, which curiously all the church was destroyed, except the statue which then was left there. So the statue when when there is a building up, here there is a kind of thing that they turned <laughs> the statue toward the people. And otherwise, they turn it the other way. <laughs> now, the most important thing, if we want to show is, yeah, one day I, I spoke about it with Frank Gehring, and he said this was the most important experience, one of the most important of the one, but in his life. I mean, the motion has this modulation in the roof, the section of the roof, and has a modulation in the, in the floor. And the other thing, is that all the light is meant to make you see uh, the shape of, of the shell. To me, is the contrary. I mean, the principle is that this is light, this is light, this is dark, and this is have light coming from the top, like that. So, but another thing which is curious is that uh, you remember the school of Jefferson, where you have the, the houses for the faculty. Uh, this is beautiful because they are, there is a slope and there are walls in brick. And Jefferson, I don't know if he very new did it, but they are curved like that. So that means that they are self-sustaining and they can all. And Cobizier, when he came to, uh, he loved the same, he loved the guarantee of the same. And when he came to Monchamp, is he could not, there were a lot of stones, but he could not use it, like, let's say, for uh, construction, because they had been burned. So he could use it to make walls, but he had to sustain those walls. That is why, these walls, you have, you have a structure of concrete, which is everywhere, which all the same, and the, uh, here you have uh, all these fantastic windows and, and you have a grid uh, with projected concrete here. And the other walls are curved because you reuse the stone to make the curve. But the, the wall do not support the roof. So the, the, the roof is totally suspended above that. So this is a, a very, uh, you know, the, the project is slowly when you see the, the different studies for Monchon, it, it was not made in one day. Monchon was five years of project, you know, four or five years. I mean, it's, it's, you cannot make this thing like that. It's not, um, it's why uh, Van Gehry invented the thing, you take a piece of paper and you, ha! <laughs> oh, don't touch it, but it's true, it can be done. It's a different aesthetic. <laughs> but if you pay for what uh, from Gary doing uh, the wind, it's cheaper if you ask just the studio. Because there are three prices. If you make a house, it's very good. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah.
if Snow's studio apparently is stupid, if Frank look at it it's a little bit more, but if he does it, remember have you seen the movie of uh, Kipnis uh, about the house of uh, Cleveland? Uh, after how uh, much it was? 60 million when he stopped? So, how much it was? Uh, he, he fed me, but he had a fact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was, it was, okay. Thank you. So, you could tell me what is the difference between a coyote and a monkey. I like this story.